Welcome to part four of the AEX7 setup. Um, in the last three parts, we um, had a look at um, different kind of basic setups and also some we did some general ledger postings and we also had a look at the vendor setup. In this section, we are going to have a look um, in more detail a bit the, about the vendors. So the method of payments, uh, payment terms, how to do split postings, financial dimension sets and the whole payments of the vendors. Good, perfect. So this means actually nothing else than I can basically close this and go back into AX. So um, the payment method in the end is basically just the way how you pay something. So this means, for example, if you pay it by check or if you want to create a kind of a SEPA file, a SEPA file in, um, in the European Union, it's quite often used, or in Switzerland, a DTA file. Um, this is basically the way, um, in this case, you need to use the payment methods in the end. Um, I'm going to set up actually a payment method which is going onto a bridging account. So basically, you're not I'm not going to post it directly onto the bank because I want to post at first onto bridging account and after you get the crediting from your bank, I want to transfer it from the bridging account onto the real bank account. So in this case, of course, I do need to create at first um, a new main account. So this means under general ledger, chart of accounts, um, accounts and main accounts, I can create in here uh, my new main account. By the way, it looks now a little bit different than to how it looks in standard because I just personalized the form. It's not anymore the way that you can just drag and drop it like it was in AX 2012, but with the right mouse button, you can basically here uh, say you want to personalize it and then you can move it to the left or move it to the right or whatever. Good, but anyhow, um, as you can see, I'm in the wrong mandate, so I of course, I'm going to my company, which I've created in the beginning, where I just have those main accounts. Good. I click on new, and now I can say, well, I want to create a bridging bank account, so let's call it 10299. And let's say bridging account, or let's say it bank bridging account. I It is also balance sheet account. And this is it already. Um, do not allow manual entry is not needed. So basically we have the main account now available. Because of the account structure, it should also be possible actually to uh, use it because I said in the range from 10,000 to 29,999, it is just the standard. So just the main accounts um, on these accounts. So basically we should be able to post on it already. Good. Um, the method of payments, accounts payable, of course, and then under payment setup, you can go and say here under method of payment, uh, you can say that you want to create a new one. So again, here on the plus symbol, and I normally call it accordingly to my bank. So I have um, a UBS bank account in Swiss francs. So I create a method of payment for UBS Swiss francs, basically the period itself, put it to total. It's often, it's more often used in total um, because uh, it will summarize then the payments uh, by vendor um, and by the period in the end. So if I would leave it on invoice, the payment in the end would generate one payment for each invoice, which is normally not wanted. And therefore you can just use here the period total. So, and I say UBS CHF, um, no grace period, this does, doesn't matter at all. And basically important here is that you choose then the account type bank and of course the correct bank account, in this case UBS Swiss francs. As I said, I want to bridge the posting, so I don't want to post directly onto this bank account, but I want to go over a bridging account, therefore I need to switch here to yes and choose then here my bank bridging account. Good. Um, payment control and payment attributes is just kind of validation. So if it is necessary to have a payment ID, for example, then you can put it in here. Normally, if you don't have to put it actually. So this means, um, yeah, you can basically already leave it like this. Um, let's also have a look at the export formats. Um, what kind of formats we have available. Um, so currently, 
well, the check is available, then some US payment files. So there are neither German nor Swiss, so there is no DTA, no DTAUS file available. So currently there are those export files are not yet available. But anyhow, we leave the export format um, away for the moment. I'm going to show later on how to create checks, basically just for the US friends or Canada friends, which are still using or which are using checks in Europe. It's um, yeah not anymore common to use checks. We have the SEPA payment file. I'm also going to try to set up um, a SEPA payment later on, but yeah, this will be on a later play place. So I create a second method of payment, UBS Euro um, bank account, of course, in this case, UBS Euro, um, also going over the bridging account, um, bridging account, bank bridging account, yep. It would actually be possible to create the second bridging account, one for UBS Euro and one for UBS Swiss francs, but anyhow, for the moment, for the moment, that's, for the moment, that's fine. Good, so we have the two payment methods already created. Uh, let's move on with the payment terms, I guess also here, yep, right, so terms of payments. This is basically nothing else than the net method, basically, so this means I can say I'm creating here N30, so net 30 days, which means nothing else than after 30 days, uh, it will be due. So if I post an invoice with a document date of the 1st of December, then it will be due on the 31st of December. Um, there are several options. So also things, things like, let's say, um, yeah, let's create the normal net 60 days. Also payment method is net, of course, um, days 60 and yeah, good. Okay, um, I create a third one, let's call it um, N30 um, EOM, so basically nothing else than net 30 days end of month. So basically just um, we say in this case, okay, it's calculating plus 30 days and then at the end of the month, uh, it will be due. It's also kind of a payment term, which is often used, for example, in uh, France, yeah, somehow in Switzerland, also not that common in the US, I think as well not. Good. Um, what is the difference? So the only difference is actually um, I'm also using here the method of payment uh, net, basically. Um, days also 30. The only difference is I need to change here or add here the payment day. Now I have still the same problem that I still can't go to the main table somehow, uh, but anyhow, this means nothing else than I would need to add here as well a payment day. Um, also in payment setup, payment days, I can go in and say uh, create the new one and let's say it EOM end of month. And then I can add here a kind of basically the day of the month. So for example, I add here month and the day of the month should be the 31st. So always the last day of the month. Of course, in February, you would use the 28th or 29th, of course. Good. I save this end of month payment day and I go back to uh, the terms of payment. And in here, in this one, I go to the edit mode and I say payment day, end of month. Good, uh, save, and that's fine, perfect. Um, so those are just the net methods, always just the net methods. Um, if you have cash discounts, then you would need to create a second one. So basically just a cash discount payment terms, I'm also going to create one, which means I can go here to new and I can say um, 10 T2, so 10 days, 2% cash discounts. Good, next discount code not needed. Yep, so um, basically here as well, net, so net 10 days, we have here two percentage, two percentage uh, discount. Good, okay, so um, the main account for customer discounts and this is new accounts on the invoice lines. Use main account for vendors discount. 
or accounts on the invoice lines. Okay, this looks great. This means I can, okay. So normally, normally it was always the case that you were just able to use a kind of a, um, a cash discount, uh, which you add here. New was now you have also the possibility to say that you want to reduce the cost itself. It's interesting. I'm going to choose this actually. So this means nothing else than it will be reduced from from the cost account. But what is on the purchase order? On the purchase order, will it reduce then the stock count? Okay. Anyhow, we will see. Um, of course, I would need to add here um, a correct main account. And since I still um, since I'm still not able to jump, I just add here for the moment um, travel cost. Otherwise, I can't save it, so I save it. But I'm going to create one, of course. So I just say here uh, in the general ledger and uh, am I blind? Am I blind? Um, chart of account accounts main accounts and i create a new one again i say um 390 customer settlement disc discount it's a profit and loss account that's fine and this is it that's fine and i create another one 49050 vendor um settlement settlement discount also profit and loss good i'm not going to add this one but anyhow um two accounts payables payment setup and cash discounts cash discounts i go into the edit mode and i say here I'm choosing here now the correct one, and the correct one would be customer settlement account. Good. So I save it, and we have the payment terms. Okay, uh, let's create a new vendor now that we really have it from the beginning correctly. So also accounts payable, vendors, and vendors. I'm going to create a new one. So I click on new, and I say, my second vendor and as as you see now also the vendor account number changed as you saw in part three i changed it over there so this means the group in this case let's say it is not a domestic but it is a rest of world um rest of world vendor yep good so this means now i say yeah let's use here the ch F, so Swiss francs, because as you know, Switzerland is not in the European Union and therefore it would be a rest of world customer, a uh, vendor, of course. Good. Um, invoice and delivery is still fine, um, but we have now here the payment. So the terms of payment, I say, okay, I have the payment term net 30 days or 10 days with 2% cash discount. So I just need to add in here the N30 and in the cash discount field, I need to say 10 days, 2%. Plus, of course, the method of payment in this case, UBS Swiss francs, because by default, this vendor is in Swiss francs. Perfect. Financial dimensions, we leave it away, but of course I'm going to add an address and I say my second vendor. Um, it's in Switzerland and yes, I want to. And the postal codes are of course not available. Let's say here, um, super street. I don't even think that Switzerland have that high house numbers but anyhow city yona and we click on okay perfect so we have the vendor we have the we've added the payment in the payment things in here so this means next is that we can go and create um a posting on this vendor i'm going to add this payment information also on the first vendor actually just that we don't have problems later on so this means nothing else and I can just say here, I want to open, I want to go to my first vendor and I'm going to add in here as well the payment terms. So let's say this one has just, no, let's say the end of month and the method of payment is UBS Euro because this one is a domestic one in euros. 
without any cash discount. Good. Okay. So, of course, normally you would need to add here the, the vendor bank account, but since we are not going to create any kind of uh, file yet, this is also not mandatory in this case. Important is the first invoice that we've already posted on this vendor is actually just don't have yet the method of payment, the payment terms and whatever, because we've added it uh, on a later point of time when the record or the invoice already existed. And therefore we just need to add this information. So this means if I'm on this vendor, I can click here on vendors and then on transactions. Good. Okay. Um, so first of all, I can go then to payment and I can say, well, this one is UBS Euro. So I add it in here. Um, the bank is fine. Good. And of course, the terms of the terms of payment itself is not um, on the invoice itself, but um it is on the open one so on the open transaction so i can click open details and i can say well okay the due date is because it is 30 days um end of month it is the 31st of january uh, and then of course 2016 without any cash discounts so this means i can save it and i can go back and i can go back and i'm again on the Vendor. Good. So let's move on with creating um, some invoices. Also, still not invoices over a purchase order, but normal normal invoices where you don't have a purchase order. Uh, this means accounts payable, of course, invoices, and then invoice journal. Yep. And I click on new. I choose here the PI. And I say my first split posting and I can go to lines. Good. Okay. Um, 30th of December is fine. I choose at first. Let's create at first one invoice without any kind of uh, split. So just a one to one. So if I open here the drop down, funny, somehow the lockup is not showing. Anyhow, um, good, the invoice date. So I have the posting date, 30th of December. I say, well, uh, it was actually the 15th of December. So on the invoice, it was shown 15th of December. I add the description, I say um, my invoice without split i say here 500 swiss francs and just one second i just make this one here a little bit more nicer regarding the view somehow at the moment it is not really shown that nice so let's say a five also interested does it happen if I what happens if I click on F5 I think it is going to refresh it at least I hope so yeah, it somehow has problems at the moment so let's go quickly uh, totally problems I just quickly make a break and I will go uh, quick have Good, okay, I just quickly closed and restart, uh, reopened uh, the Internet Explorer and now it um, seems to work um, again. So this means nothing else and also this lockup in here is now again working. So I can say my first my invoice without split. Um, we said 500 Swiss francs and I wanted to make this one here a little bit smaller. Maybe this one also a little bit smaller. Good. And this one also a little bit smaller. Good. Uh, since we just have one um, account, actually, so one cost account, um, I'm going to do it in here this way that I say, well, this one is on to the travel costs. Okay. 
You see here as well now that he is going to calculate based on the invoice date. So 15th of December plus 30 days will be the 14th of January 2016 where you have the net due date and the cash discount date will be the 25th of uh, December. So plus 10 days and the cash discount amount is 10. Good. Perfect. I going to create the second um, invoice so this means nothing else for the same vendor I just say here um, 15th 15th 12th 8 16th invoice my split posting I say 700 I want to post onto this vendor but in this time 300 um, costs were for um, were for the cost center let's say 100 and the other one for the one with 300. This means nothing else and in this case of a split posting you just need to create a new line without an offset account because um, your AX will bring you the same voucher number as long as the posting is not balanced. So this means in this case in the second line I just choose here the ledger because I'm not going to post it anymore onto the vendor plus I can choose here this cost center which means nothing else than I'm going to post it on the travel cost invoice date doesn't that matter invoice also doesn't really matter this means I can say here 300 Swiss francs on to travel costs for this cost center and as you can see if I create a new line then it will still have the same voucher number where I can go and say again the same ledger number with 66 and this time another cost center so description let's say travel costs uh, sales I guess it was east I was not I'm not sure but anyhow I can go to this one here and I can say travel costs uh, purchase and I can add here these 400 Good. Now the voucher PI0003 is balanced because 700, 300, 400, which means, and I create a new line with arrow down, I end up still on the same voucher because there is because there is a balance of 0 0.01. Seriously? Um, okay, quickly delete this line this line here let's use another amount 1500 500 500 now it is balanced 700 300 is it really a rounding issue I have 0 0.01. Okay, so um, I guess it is because in the general ledger parameter we didn't add any kind of um, threshold. So I just quickly go to is it posting setup? Where are the general ledger parameters? General ledger parameters here. And maximum penny difference, uh, let's add it to 0 0.009 which means that if I go back to my general ledger journal, it was not general accounts payable, and to the invoice journal, lines, good, and if I create now one, yep, okay, now it creates a new, a new voucher number, okay, so it was just, um, in the general ledger parameters, add their add their a maximum penny difference um, because you will always have kind of penny differences, and otherwise uh, you will you will end up with errors in the sales order postings or wherever. Um, especially if you have many lines uh, in the sales order, there will be sometimes um, penny differences, which are which are around sometimes around twenty pence, so 0 0.0.2 0 .2, 0 0.2 Swiss francs, for example. Um, so add there any kind of amount actually and make it higher if you would have um, kind of an issue where you have the problem actually. But anyhow, good. So we have basically the first line is just the vendor posting. So on the vendor posting, we've added the whole terms of payment 
um, and 700. So we're going to post on the event render 700. Um, later on, when you have VAT, the VAT information is here, not really necessary because you don't post it on the vendor but you're going to post it on the um, on the cost account so here you would need to add the um, VAT information but we'll see it later on good here terms of payment of course since it is posting to the cost account it is not um, necessary good so we add another one for the first vendor in this time so basically for my first vendor uh, invoice date let's say 15th of December uh, so um, it is actually 30 EOM, so 30 days end of month. I say 150 euros and I say here I want to post directly onto this one and here sales west. Good. So what is he calculating? Sorry. What is he calculating? So Based on the invoice date, he's going to calculate plus 30 days, would be the 14th of January, and then the end of the month. So the due date is on the 31st of uh, January. Of course, if I would say uh, here, for example, 1st of, 1st of December, 1st of December, then we would end up with the due date with the due date of the 31st of December because 1st of December plus 30 days is the 31st and the end of month of the 31st is still the 31st so yeah quite simple in the end good so this means nothing else then I can post these journals with my totally three vouchers and totally three invoices so this means there should not be any errors hopefully and there is an error and I can have a look at the message detail and account number for transaction type error account does not exist. The transaction on voucher does not balance and we have here again the 0 0.01 and of course, okay. Yeah, we started with a really new mandate and there are in the general ledger, um, there are automated accounts, accounts for automatic transactions and we should need we have to add it here as well. So this means I can create here the default types and I can say, well, all the whole stuff which is going to uh, which is going to penny differences and things like this or is in my case at the moment the vendor settlement, the penny difference as well, the vendor cash discount, by default as well the invoice rounding off the vendor invoice rounding off and the customer cash discount is the 30 0, 50. of course you can use different kind of accounts it definitely makes sense to have um, another one for the invoice rounding than the cash discount but yeah it's just to show you would need, just need to create a new main account and add it in here and then it's basically fine i think the error account is not needed even if it was said there that you would, you would need but in the end there should not be any kind of error posting at all so therefore uh, yeah you it's not necessarily needed to um, post it or to add it there in the end so this means I'm going back to my journal I go back to lines and I try to post it once again and posting results still an error Of course, of course, okay. Also a typical error which um, appears. Mm, so this means nothing else than uh, he tries to post a 0 0.01 now onto the customer, onto the vendor settlement account. And based on the account structure, we need to have a cost center. Uh, so this means nothing else than I'm going to create a new main account for rounding differences because then it is more clear for you, hopefully, what uh, this means. Um, so I say chart of account and accounts and main account. Good. So based on the account structure, we said all the cost accounts at the moment does need to have um, a cost center. Good. Therefore, this error. So this means I click on new, I create here, let's say, um, it's somehow 74, 0, 74 100 
190. So rounding differences. Okay. It's a profit and loss account. I save it. And basically, yeah, it is the thing that um, at the moment, at the moment, uh, he would also have the need to have um, a kind of a, a cost center. In this case, in this case, we just need to add here a fixed cost center because the amount should never be big. So it should always be quite um, low. <laughs> and therefore, we can add here definitely a fixed cost center. So this looks totally new. It's more or less new. So because I need to switch from the chart of account level to the company level because one chart of account can be shared. So let's see. And yeah, so okay, I need to add here then the diamond of the, the company and then the default dimension. Yep. And then I can say I will add here a fixed value, which is always admin because in your cost accounting you or a dummy or whatever, just a cost center that you have basically on every on every um, cost account, either a cost center or a purpose. Good. So of course, I switch it back in the posting setup that now the rounding differences are going to my new account. So the penny differences here is now 74100. Uh, 74190 in the penny differences, in the penny differences here as well. Cash discount, not invoice rounding as well. This one rounding off as well. This one, okay, safe. Now we can post it. Accounts payable, vendors, no, invoices, and invoice journal, and lines. And we post it. And finally, he posted, he posted it. Perfect. So we've posted now these um, invoices. And if we have a look at what we already did and what we said we are going to do, we already had the method of payment, the payment terms, the split posting. So the next will be the financial dimension sets, which, which we will have um, a look at. Good. Financial dimension sets is nothing else than a split of a view onto um, the main accounts, for example. So as you can see here, you have um, you have here one main account with different kind of uh, financial dimensions, so cost centers. Now, if you just have a look at the trial balance at the moment, so this means if you just go here to general ledger inquiries and reports and trial balance, then you just see here 66,000 and the whole amount. Now, maybe you want to see not only the, the main account, but also the cost center. So the split by cost center, which means nothing else than you see uh, admin travel costs is 700 and purchase travel costs is 800 and so on. For this case, you need to create the financial dimension sets. So this means nothing else. And you can go to general ledger and and financial dimensions, maybe somewhere, journal setup, ledger setup, Chart of count, dimensions, financial dimension sets. Okay, chart of count, dimensions, financial dimension sets. Good. So you can create also a new one. The main account just is already available. I create now um, MA main account underscore CC, no, minus CC underscore zero 010, which means nothing less than main account plus cost center. 010 company from company 010 and then I can go and say well on first place I want to have the main account and on the second place I want to have my CC 010 good after that when you create it you always need to click here on create balance and then you can just hope that it does not take too long I'll quickly make pause here until it's done Good, so it took around 45 seconds, um, not that much. And I create also a new one where I say, so a second financial dimension set where I say just CC 010. So cost center from company 
10. And in this case, I'm not going to add the main account. I just go and add here the CC010. And again, I say create balance. And I would be able also to say it in the background, but I don't want to. And then I click on OK. And this one should not take long at all. So I think that it is finished more or less right now. Perfect. So now what can we do? Let's go back to the general ledger inquiries and report and trial balance. Good. So now, as you can see, still we have here just the 66,000 travel costs, but you have now the possibility here to say you don't want to see it by main account, but you want to see it by main account plus CC010, which means nothing else than AX is now going to split all these things. So basically the same main account, so the, the total travel costs into its cost center. So I see now the amount of the travel costs for cost center admin is 676.19. For purchase, it is this. For sales east, it's this and, and so on. And by the way, if it is still the same, I should be also able to somehow export it to Excel. That parameters are here, so I can say from when to when. Control and T, it was in, nope, definitely not. Control T is not anymore working, also not working in here. So let's see, what is this? Okay, so then it's this button here, export to Excel, trial balance. And when I click on that, then he opens what you see, um, just one at the moment because I have here the tick. So I can say either I want to have this one, this one, and this one, and I can say export to Excel. And then I have those four, or I can say, if I don't tick anything, uh, it's either don't take, tick anything or tick all, then you can say export to Excel. And if you open it, then you have basically the whole thing uh, in in an Excel file. Basically, it's more or less working on every kind of grid that you can imagine. Good. So last point, the payments. So the payments itself is also accounts payable. And then under payments and then payment journal. And I'm going right now directly to create the journal type because also for the payment, you need to have um, another journal. And since I cannot jump to the main table still or view the details, I'm going to create it directly in here in the general ledger in the journal setup and the journal names where I can say, okay, I create a new one, PP purchase payments. Um, the journal type is vendor or vendor disbursement. Yep. Vendor disbursement and the voucher series. Of course, I need to create at first the voucher series. So therefore, um, I quickly add it in here and I need to create the voucher series under organization administration, then number sequences and number sequences. I create the new number sequence, new number sequence. I say um, 0, 010 minus PP. So purchase, purchase payments, bah, 0, 010. The scope is, of course, not shared, but it is for my company, so the 010. And I don't want to have any kind of company number. I just want to have a constant, which is in this case purchase payment PP, and with six digits and also with six digits, and it should be continuous. And I save it and I copy this and I go back to my created journal in the journal names on the general ledger. I go to PP, I go to edit, and I override here the voucher series and I'm saving it. Perfect. Now I can go back to the accounts payable and now I can really create my payment journal. Good. I click, click on new as always and in here I choose here my first payment journal and I can go two lines. Good. Um, now you have two options, either you're going to create a, a manual payment, uh, let's do this at first. So we're just going to create one manual payment for one vendor. Um, so this means nothing else, then we are going to 
add here manually the account of my first vendor. I say not yet anything. So this means nothing else than I add here my first vendor. I go to functions and settlement. <laughs> um, post and transfer is here. Okay. Um, inquiries. Um, ah, okay. Okay. It's a new place. It's not anymore up here. Uh, so here is the settlement button. Uh, this means I need to click then here to settlement. And now I can say, okay, which one do I want to pay? So I have two invoices, two times over 150, and I can just mark those actually. So I can say, I want to pay both over 300 euros, um, or I can say, I just want to pay the second one, or I want to pay just the first one. Um, for example, I say, at first, I just want to have the first one. And then he added automatically in here the amount. If you want to change it, then you can click again on settlement and mark the second one as well and there isn't any information anymore but here now there is an information so ax asks you now because the amount changed in the journal from before to now he he's saying do you want to change it to the current amount and yes of course you want to do that and then he adds here uh, 300 euros also, as you can see, based on the method of payment, which we added before, also on the transactions and also on to the vendors, he automatically telling you, well, okay, um, the offset account is the bridging account, which is correct because this method of payment told you that, um, yeah, that basically it is um, over bridging account and therefore it is also, it will also post onto this account. Perfect. So this means we can, click on post and the journal should post and it is posted one voucher this is perfect and in some cases you have to view details actually always if the record exists uh, then it is available and also just in grids somehow this is as far as I see so if you if you have the line available in a grid and the record already exists, then you are able to click on view details and you end up on the related table. So in this case, on the vendor master data. Good. So let's have a look at the transactions. So this means if I go here, vendor transactions, then I see I have here my payment. I have a balance of zero and I still, I'm still able to say show open only. And of course, nothing is um, not open and therefore it's already great um let's see okay the settlement is also also on a different place inquiries no open the history project definitely not let's have a look okay his settlement history so ah, okay perfect okay so this is it so if you want to see which Invoices you paid from which payment? Awesome. You want us to know now that which invoices you paid with this payment, then you can go to settlement and settlement history, and then you have those two invoices. And the other way around, if you want to know when and with, with which payment it was posted, then you can do the same. And then you see, okay, with PP0001, it was posted. Also new, as I see, you can directly undo the settlement in here. So this means just reverse reverse the settlement um so basically just the connection between the payment and the invoice but uh, for the moment that's fine let's go back and back to the journal that's fine so this journal is now posted and if i click f5 then it is gone good now let's create another journal uh, in this case we are going to make a payment proposal payment pro -po -pro proposal and I can go again to lines and I can then go in here and say I want to create a payment proposal good um, since I have cash discounts um, I'm not sure if I added two times the same date we'll see uh, so if I say here I do I want to have also cash discount so I want to pay all due invoices, but I also want to 
to take away the cash discounts, so basically both, then I can say here, yeah, calculate me both. So this means nothing else than if the, if the payment date, so if I'm still able to reduce the cash discount on the payment date, that he, then he would then he is go to reduce it. I say, I'm actually not anymore sure what kind of dates I've added, so I just say here, payment date, minimum payment date, always take it out. So because of our method of payment, which is done with the, with the total and not invoice, uh, he will summarize it then everything onto the payment date. So always in payment runs, uh, take out the minimum payment date. Uh, yeah, From and to date, means nothing else than I want to pay all invoices which are due or the cash discount um, is of course due until this one here. Um, okay, here are the filters and some other things which are actually not needed. Uh, this means if I want to filter for one currency, I can say, well, in this journal, I just want to use here the currency CHF because I'm going to make my Swiss francs uh, payments. Good, I can click on OK, and now the vendor payment proposal should appear. And it is blank because then those are, because then the due date won't be due yet. So this means I just quickly say here, until this 2016, and take out the minimum date, payment date is, yep, and just Swiss francs and OK. Perfect. Strange. Because I've added the 31st of December, but the cash discount was was taken away. So it was said that it was not... Ah, of course, of course. Yeah, makes sense. I'm going to pay it on the 31st of December. Um, and they, the cash discount date were due on the 25th and on the 26th. And then AX is telling you, well, I can't reduce the cash discount. and Therefore, he uh, took them away, so didn't brought it because after the cash discount date, he is going for the due date. So this means in the end, nothing else than the cash discount, which he would reduce here, is also zero. Um, so as you can see here, 25th of December um, would not appear. So actually, the payment amount would be also in this case 500 and 700 because no cash discount is reduced. Even if here down here it's standing, it it's just what would be the cash discount which would have been available. But anyhow, I, I say let's do it this way. I say 25th of December. Quickly cancel it. I just quickly create a new one, and I say again not minimum payment date. I say here the payment date uh, 25th of December. Still, I want to see all of them. If I would add here this one as well, then uh, just one would appear. And uh, but I say again, the 0 to 28, 16, that both would appear. And then on OK. Hmm. Why is he not going to take away the cash discount? Let's say 24th then. No, this doesn't make sense. Cancel again. Twelve. And due date and cash discount date. 
is it two is it the two date which is needed to it's almost it almost seems so either that or 25th payment date also 25th and let's do it this way then just one would appear and in this one none appear why due date and cash discount and okay Hmm. Interesting. Still, he would not use here the cash discount. Is he taking the date not from the Thing, but from the current date so let's let's try something else so I just quickly go back to the overview okay and in this case I just that's also new if I click here then AX asked me do we want to change your session uh, date to the 20 to the 12th uh, the 9th of December I say yes and now I'm now I'm actually working on the 9th of December uh, yeah yeah <laughs> not really, not really, not. So I don't like it that it is there. I think it's possible to take it away as well. But anyhow, let's go back to the journal. And if I go now to lines, then yeah, he brings me the ninth. And I do exactly the same. I create the payment proposal. And I say in here again the 25th. And on OK. No, as well not. One sec. Yeah, it seems that it seems that there is kind of a bug available because if I click here on payment proposal and if I say yeah well due date and cash discount date and if I say here twelfth for example and if I click on OK the first one will have now the cash discount the second one not. So again not, but if I would tell him here 12 Twelve twenty-five, and now he reduces it. So this means, so the first one, twelve, the twenty-sixth of December, he doesn't reduce it at the moment. If I just Control X, so I just take it out. I say for one moment, for any reason, first of January sixteen. I put it back to the twenty-sixth of December, and I go back. Then he reduces it. So it seems somehow that at the moment it is not calculating it um, correctly, or I did any kind of um, wrong setup because normally, as I also changed a little bit because normally you had here also the method, so always or never or whatever. Um, but anyhow, we have now the cash discounts in here with a little bug, which will be definitely, that's my opinion, a bug, um, which will definitely be, um, yeah, will be. So it will definitely be corrected after that. Um, so it will be corrected in the next version, I guess, because this is something which is quite obvious. Good. So we have now here um, the payment. So in this payment, of course, I can go back to settlement again. And here I would see those two amount to settle and so on. Uh, that's fine. I can click on OK and I can post it. And let's see if AX is going to post it. Nope, because ah, 
I already have an exchange rate gain um, and loss, which does not exist. So, okay, means nothing else than we need to go and create a new account and add this then also to our posting rules. So chart of account, accounts and main account. And new. And uh, 48090. Realized gains, fx gains. That's already fine. Uh, not control and not control and n by the way alt and n again it's still something that i'm not yet used to it for eight zero nine twenty two um realized fx losses alt and n four eight zero ninety four unrealized fx gains four eight zero nine six um realized uh, unrealized unrealized fx losses um it depends on your company if you want to have it in the normal cost section so in the 40 section or if you want to have in the financial income and financial losses then it would be a 74 at least from from a swiss chart of account logic good um <clears throat> we are going to add this now as well to um, the currency so you would be able to have just one or you can add actually the posting the posting rule for um, each currency so yep currency reallocation accounts would be for each currency you add it um, separately or if you go to the normal ledger setup and ledger then you can add here the standard accounts for the realized and unrealized losses so this means just one for all And the other one would be separate, separated by currency. Good. So accounts payable. And now payments and payment journal. And lines. And now we can post it. And here as well, the offset account is also the bridging account. Perfect. So we've posted it. Um, so this means basically nothing else than we have now done the payments itself, but it is at the moment on the bridging account. So this means there is one last step. So let's say tomorrow you will receive from the bank the, that they've credited your bank account, which means you just need to transfer the bridging posting onto your bank account. This is quite simple, actually. I normally do it over a general ledger journal. So this means um, just general ledger journal entries and then general journals. I can say new, uh, not here. You can say new journal, general journals. I click on new and then I say in here, general journal um, of or balancing or balancing um, bridging, bridging account. Good. And then two lines. And then you have here on the functions, select bridged transactions. So I can say select bridged transactions. And then I can say, well, which one do I want to select? And of course it is normally separated by bank account. This means I just say, yeah, in, uh, I just take both. So this means, no, I take just one. I take this one because it needs to post on separate bank accounts. So this means I say accept code. And he makes automatically the correct one. I'd quickly delete it once again. Yes. And I can say functions again, select bridged transactions. This time I'm going to choose both and accept. And then there should be two lines, right? So this means on Euro and CHF, this is fine. So I can say, I want to post it, of course, also with the same date. So this means I can post and posted vouchers that's fine and as you can see under inquiries view marked transactions you will basically just see that the posting itself hmm. inquiries view more not balance control view marked transactions okay um not anymore under inquiries ah okay uh, not anymore on the inquiries, but you have here the voucher <laughs> also on a 
different place. And what he posted is nothing else than he took it out from the bridging account and put it onto the Euro Bank Euro account, which means, of course, that if we have a look here on our trial balance, and I don't want to see, I just want to see the main account, that our bridging account is currently balanced. If I would say, as it is balanced on every day, but I can say 12, and then it is, of course, also zero, but we just have these postings in here. Good. Perfect. This was it for this section. It was quite a long section, so an hour. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. And yeah, we have so we did have some trouble problems, but in the end, we everything was quite um, went quite good. So um, great. So I hope I will see you in the next part. Next part will cover the sales tax. Perfect.